So the wizard and I went back to my room to review what we'd learned. To Snow White, their mother was very kind, but to Red, she was emotionally distant. Strange, isn't it? How can their opinions be such polar opposites? Well, according to Snow White, their mother's personality changed drastically at one point. The way he described her after the change sounded an awful lot like the emotionally distant mother Red Riding Hood described. Why might that be? Not to mention, I have to wonder why Snow White would think he wasn't her real child. That, and Red's comment about his unusual appearance makes me curious. Ah, uh, hello? Lidiaris, sir? The next thing I knew, the wizard was peering into my face. Huh? Are you listening? Of course I am. I'm just thinking at the same time, that's all. You must be good at multitasking. He grinned. Yeah, I get that a lot. I grinned back. Once he made sure I was paying attention, the wizard sat down on the chair by the window and crossed his legs. So, what were you thinking about? The answers to your questions. And the answers to mine. Did you find them? I've got a few hypotheses, but nothing more than that. I feel that, girl. So, in other words, you haven't figured anything out yet. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to call me out like that, though. But just as I was about to fall back into thought... For now, why don't we consult the one other person who has memories of their mother? In other words, Cinderella. Yeah, I'm curious about that. We've always kind of focused on Dad with Cinderella, so... You want to know about Mom? She was sweet and beautiful. She loved sparkly stuff, just like me. As the oldest son, Cinderella would arguably remember their mother the best. Did your impression of your mother change at any point? The wizard wasted no time cutting to the chase. Naturally, this confused Cinderella, seeing as he wasn't privy to the other conversations we'd had. My apologies. We've heard a lot from Snow White, you see. At the Cinderella seemed to put two and two together. Ah, I get it. He let out a sigh. <sighs> it's true that Mom changed. After Dad left, we moved to a little cabin in the woods. At first, I just thought she'd gotten overprotective, you know, making me stay inside all the time. And did you obey her request? No. He smiled bitterly. And I guess it came back to bite me, because one day she just stopped being nice. She looked at me like... Like I didn't belong, I guess. Almost like she was afraid of me. But I couldn't hold it against her. Not only was she struggling with work, but she was getting hounded by debt collectors, too. No one was around to help her. She had to do everything herself. She was just... tired. His tone wasn't hostile or resentful, but sympathetic. This contrasted with the other brothers' reactions. I can tell you really loved her, Cinderella. Yeah, of course. And I don't hate our dad for abandoning us either. Smiling, he looked away. They were only human. They had their flaws like anybody else. Maybe they wanted to run away from their problems. I know the feeling. And you ran so far that you split into multiple people. After we finished talking with Cinderella, it was time for dinner. After the awkward conversations we'd had, Cinderella and Red Riding Hood, Snow White was absent as per usual, still not eating, bad boy, were eerily quiet, so we ate our cream stew in uncomfortable silence. Then, when they were done, they hurried back to their rooms as if to avoid being around us. 
Kaguya and Gretel didn't comment on this, but they had clearly picked up on it. Once they finished eating, they left the room too. Just like that, the wizard and I were the only ones left. Now then, let's tie together everyone's memories and see what we have. Once upon a time, their family was wealthy, but their father made some bad calls and they fell into debt. He fled the country, leaving his family behind. Stuck with the debt, their mother worked day and night to repay it. She was a very kind person, but then she hit a point where she started to treat her children coldly. This was Cinderella's and Snow White's shared experience. Now, let's add in Red Riding Hood's side of the story. To him, their mother was a cold, unfeeling person who hardly ever came home. He resented being cooped up in the house, and so he disobeyed her orders. Then one day, he met Wolf at the lake. They became fast friends, and before long they started spending every day together. Then one day, after playing at the lake like always, Red Riding Hood came home to find his mother cold and unfeeling in a different sense. Now we switch back to Snow White. When Snow White found his dear mother's corpse, he was unable to accept her death and had no one to turn to, so he continued living with her. But even that couldn't last long. He couldn't bear to watch her rot, so he ran out of the house one night and met Ryoshi at the lake. Afterwards, he told Ryoshi everything and became a shut-in. Is that where we're at? I kept my expression neutral as I looked at him. Then he continued. Good heavens! Quite the tragic tale we have here. Everyone in this family has been through a great deal. But at this point, I'm starting to wonder about the two who don't remember their parents. I understand Kaguya was passed around from relative to relative. Why was that necessary if their mother was alive? And the comments Snow White made about not being his mother's real child. What did he mean by that? Piece by piece, he laid out all the information for me. But he was the detective, not me. Plus, something in his tone felt almost melodramatic. Like he was testing me, and I wasn't enjoying it. Mr. Wizard. Hmm. Don't you think maybe we should give it a rest? Oh? What happened? I thought you wanted to do this. My first reaction was to get mad at him, but I quickly thought better of it. I wasn't being dragged along against my will. I was the one who suggested we team up in the first place. I'm just... starting to get scared. Why is that? It feels like if we go any further, they'll get hurt. You mean, you'll get hurt? He shot back coldly. You don't need to worry about hurting them. They're already hurt as it is. Remember what I said before. By having a precise understanding of their pain and suffering, I can plan my next moves accordingly. And it is your duty to save them. What? But I'm the one in danger! True, but you still have time. Do you know something I don't? I'm afraid I have no idea what you're talking about. He shrugged and grinned. To me, it felt like he was trying to provoke me on purpose. Instead of beating around the bush, how about I take a stab at what you're really saying? You want me to choose. That's correct. Have you ever been in love before? Yes, I have. Have you ever been in love with multiple people at the same time? No. I only have eyes for one person. 
Okay, he said that in the present tense. For some reason, hearing this admission felt like I'd won. I smirked. <laughs> then I guess you'll never understand how I feel. To me, the thought of choosing just one person is agony. Hmm... Yeah... But you're also kind of... Now part of... The... I don't know, I don't even know how to phrase it. But, you know, she's kind of... Part of Alice now. <laughs> like, it's not all Eureka. It's... Dream Eureka. I dreamed of you again last night. At one point, it looked like the darkness was going to consume me, but in the end, it wasn't strong enough. Conversely, I was now more powerful than the darkness. A lonely path only I could travel. But because I was alone, I was unshackled and free. And because I was free, no one could tie me down. I spent my life in solitude. There were four other people here in the Dark Abyss, but they were all fragile, flawed creatures who were aggravating to be around. Hmm. Why were they all so indecisive over the most inconsequential trifles? I knew what had happened to them, but I felt no sympathy for them, and I didn't try to fit in. Did I feel this way because I lacked flaws? I knew I was supposed to lead them, but personally, I had a different view of the situation. To me, if they were so annoying to deal with, then the solution was to eradicate them. But no one was able to do so, and thus the responsibility had been dumped on me. If I killed them, no one would hold me accountable. After all, no one would miss them. But one day, that changed. I was always alone, looking at the mirror. In the looking glass world, the perspective was always shifting, but I never took an interest in anything. I never got attached. Eventually, I got sick of looking at the mirror and started thinking I'd be better off if I disappeared. Within my fixed field of vision, I could see a chessboard on the table. I knew the rules of the game, but I had never played against another person. Then one day, she called out to me from the other side of the mirror. Nice to meet you. My name is... She started to introduce herself, then stopped. Well, you probably already know. In the mirror, she smiled as if she could see right through me. I know all about you. Would you tell me your name? I ignored her. Okay, so this is... So... I take it this is the wizard's perspective. Which makes sense. So... Hmm... So he fell in love with her when she came to play chess with him? I mean, that would make sense with the comment he made about, like, oh, I know you like to win, and <laughs> you don't like losing. So, with the, the four personalities, I would assume he's talking about Cinderella, Snow White, Red Riding Hood, and Kaguya. Ends up at the hospital, this fifth personality comes out. And the doctor tries to get it to destroy the other personalities, but he's unwilling to do so and tries to disappear, but then Eureka reaches out. At some point, something happens here where she, she must, like, her, her and her family must adopt this person, and then the Gretel personality comes out after that? Maybe? I'm still still trying to wrap my head around all this, but I'm just like, okay. Anyway. But then she showed up the next day and called out to me again. My brother told me you know the whole story, but no one knows about you, huh? 
They all think you disappeared. Or maybe they think you never existed to begin with. Even though you're literally right here. I'm the only one who knows about you. Can you hear me? Where are you? Even I didn't know the answer to that. She showed up again the next day and the day after that. Are you getting sick of me yet? Trust me, I know I'm being annoying. But that's just who I am. And if I was anyone else, I wouldn't be here right now. You see, there's this person who I love very much. She started talking about herself entirely unprompted. He told me he loves me too. I didn't love myself, but that didn't matter to him. He said to me, I love your gemstone eyes and soft, fluffy hair. It's what makes you, you. I already knew about that. Maybe no one else could remember it, but I could. And I'd surely never forget. Do you know who that person was? I'm right here. I answered on reflex. Ah. Hmm. Gosh, that, that like just tore up my heart. I'm <laughs> just like, oh, did she? Because there is also this aspect of like she knew this kid from when she was younger before she like moved away and stuff, right? And, like, uh, was it wizard's personality that she fell in love with? I don't know. Uh, and then she's like, oh, there's like a whole bunch of you in there <laughs> when she came back. Oh, I just don't know. I have so many questions. I still have so many hypotheses. I awoke in the middle of the night from an anxiety attack and left my room. After a great deal of deliberation and hesitation, I chose a door to knock on. Not one of the five fiancés, I bet. Oh, really? Interesting. Yes, yes, coming. Good grief. Which one of you imbeciles had to go and disturb my peaceful... Wait. Sister? Sorry to bother you so late at night. Can I sleep in your room? Uh, yeah, that's my face too, Gretel. Gretel stared back in wide-eyed surprise at my sudden request. Then his lips curled in a half-smile. Mm. You're such a needy baby. Enter at your own risk, I suppose. And so he welcomed me in. Thanks. Why are we doing this? He let me borrow half of his bed. Then he lay down facing me and spoke to me like he was reassuring a child after a nightmare. So what is it? This is the first time you've ever asked to sleep with me. I had a dream. A bad dream? No. It was really nostalgic. It was about before I came to live in this little town. And after I started living with all of you. Hey, Gretel? Hmm? Are you... Are you happy with the way things are now? Of course I am. I get to share a bed with my beloved sister, don't I? What more could I possibly ask for? <laughs> he snickered at me like the question was silly. Be honest. His smile faded and he looked back at me intently. Then he broke eye contact with me. No, I'm not. I thought maybe you came here tonight to tell me you'd chosen me. But you haven't, have you? No. Oh. <sighs> he let out an exaggerated sigh. You're such a cruel woman. You know full well the situation we're in. Yet you're doing it anyway. His bitter tone echoed through the darkened room. I'm sorry. You really think I'm going to forgive you? 
Yeah, I've got you wrapped around my finger. Oh, for crying out loud. I swear, I can't stand you sometimes. Defeated, he rolled over onto his back. Sister, I'm in love with you. I know. And I'm in love with you, too. Sister, please just choose me. If you choose me, you won't have to die. Then again, I guess my brothers all feel that way, too. Yeah. You really love them, don't you? I do. Good grief. Why did we all have to fall in love with someone as unmonogamous as you? What's wrong with us? <laughs> he let out a self-deprecating laugh. Then he rolled back over and flicked my forehead. Ow! Reflexively, I squeezed my eyes shut, plunging myself into pure darkness. When I timidly opened them again, I found Gretel pouting at me. It's your fault for being so charming. You give us everything we want. As long as we live under the same roof, there's no way we wouldn't fall for you eventually. But we can't split you five ways. Right. Besides, we wouldn't want you to love us all equally anyway. That's true. Yeah. Sister... I want to be the only thing you see. The only one you love. All we want, from the bottom of our hearts, is for you to choose us. And I want you to choose me. If you choose me, I'll do anything for you. I'll work hard in schoolwork and sports so I can be worthy of your perfection. I'll even work on my attitude. If you promise to be only mine, we'll live happily ever after. But... If you and I got together, I wonder what would happen to everyone else. I think about it from time to time, you know. Probably because we all live under the same roof, I suppose. If you were to choose someone besides me, I think I'd go insane with jealousy. It would hurt so much. I'd be heartbroken. So yes, I'd probably get frustrated with you. But at the same time, I would accept it. I love my brothers, after all. Sure, they can be obnoxious at times, and they infuriate me constantly, but... I don't hate them for it. Ah, Gretel loves his big brothers. Mm. Ow! He <laughs> karate chopped me on the head. Deserved. Jeez, don't hit me! You're such a jerk! I gave him a reproachful look. Then I saw his eyes glittering in the darkness and drew in a breath. I want you to choose me. But the choice is yours to make. When it comes to a woman who loves multiple men, I think this is probably the closest thing we have to a fair solution. Then he donned an impish grin. For now, I'll accept that you've chosen me for tonight and let you off the hook. I hope you appreciate your little brother's generosity. Right. Thanks, Gretel. I mean, I hate that we picked him for that but it was a good conversation <laughs> I mean you know if I'm viewing it through the lens of they're all different personalities in the same body I don't know it just gives it a whole different lens to look through I honestly don't know what we're gonna do about any of this Oof. The next morning when I awoke, I let Gretel sleep in and headed off to the living room where I found the wizard relaxing on the sofa. Good morning. Good morning. Did you sleep well last night? Fairly well, yeah. 
As I passed him, I grabbed my apron from the shelf nearby. But instead of putting it on, I twiddled my fingers and attempted to compose myself. Excuse me. Have you figured out who sent me the blackmail letter? No, not at all. I see. What about you, Lady Arisa? You still haven't chosen anyone. Once again, he brought up the same subject from yesterday. Wizard's kind of sus. Three days had now passed since he first arrived at our house. Only two days remained until the full moon. I closed my eyes and thought it over carefully. Who should I prioritize and what should I do to help them? The answer I found was... Whoa! Well, if that doesn't lead to a bad ending, I don't know what will. <laughs> will you choose one person to be your husband? Nope. There was no need to rush. I still had two days until the full moon. All I needed to do was find the truth before my time was up. With that decision made, it suddenly felt like a weight had lifted from my shoulders. If I was going to choose someone, then I wouldn't have hired you. Sure, if I don't choose one of my five fiancés, my life will be in danger. But even if I did choose one, no one would benefit from it. I should think the person you chose would benefit, at the very least. After all, he would get to spend the rest of his life with you. And what are the other four? Sorry to say, they'd have no choice but to back down. They won't have their own happy endings. Perhaps they will if they seek out a different story. As in they should find someone else to marry. To be perfectly frank, yes. Are you opposed to that? My cheeks flush red in embarrassment. If I can't have them, no one can. Let me guess. You think I'm greedy. Something like that. I'm not exactly proud of myself either. By falling for more than one man, I'm being unfaithful. Especially when these men are all faithful to me alone. Just then, I remembered something. Mr. Wizard, you said you're in love with someone, right? The subject had come up during our conversation last night. Yes, I am. Could I ask you what they're like? I leaned forward slightly. Last night I was too stressed out to care, but today I decided to put my problems on the back burner. Besides, I was excited to stick my nose into, uh, learn more about the mysterious wizard's personal life. For educational purposes. Ah, yes, the science excuse. I know it well. Do go on. She's a stubborn, competitive person who would do anything to win. Sounds like I would get along with her. I imagine you would. <laughs> he laughed, probably thinking about our chess games. She is a cruel person. I didn't understand myself, but that didn't matter to her. She said to me, If you don't have anything, then you can have me. But in return, I want you. You are my property. You're going to make all my desires and demands a reality. Oof, cruel indeed. Wow, who died and made her queen? I accidentally let a bit of my unfiltered opinion slip out. Fortunately, the wizard didn't seem to mind. I can see how you'd think that. But it meant a lot to me. I was a bit player until she came along and gave me a role. Now I'm her property. And I'll do whatever it takes to make her desires and demands a reality. You sound like a total masochist. <laughs> No one's ever said that about me before, but you might be right. So, is she your girlfriend? No, we're not together. I blinked. From the way he spoke about her, I figured they were an item. But you still love her? Of course I love her. Well, how does she feel about you? Beats me. I wouldn't know. 
He shrugged and stared into space, a rare occurrence for him. We've slept together on several occasions in the past, but I wouldn't call that love. She doesn't love you, but she has sex with you anyway? The second the words left my lips, I clapped a hand to my mouth in regret. Well, that was blunt. I'm sorry. He smiled wryly. When you can't get your emotional needs met, sometimes all you can do is fill the void. So you're saying she has unresolved emotional needs? Yes, I'd say so. In other words, it sounded like the wizard's beloved was interested in someone else. She was simply using him as a surrogate in the interim. Oof. My heart is breaking. <laughs> no! Justice for the wizard! I guess I don't really understand that sort of logic. I couldn't give myself to someone I didn't love. I wouldn't want to. Are you sure she didn't sleep with you because she loves you? That's not possible, I'm afraid. What makes you say that? Because she's in love with someone else. Apparently my hypothesis about her was right. So... Your feelings are one-sided. Indeed. My love for her is eternally unrequited. Eternally? The word made me indescribably sad. Isn't that kind of hard for you? Not really, believe it or not. She gave me everything I needed, physically and emotionally. He paused as though a memory had been sparked within him. Then he smiled stiffly. Perhaps I truly am a masochist. 